Hello everybody, this is Lisa from Barclay Jones and today we're running a webinar for recruitment leaders and recruitment managers who use ADAPT and need to use this best-in-class system to manage their recruiters more effectively. Now on a previous webinar we also did a smackdown for recruiters who want to basically manage their client, candidates, clients and colleagues more effectively. So please uh, look at the blog associated with this webinar for the link to that uh, smackdown. It was a really effective smackdown, really helped the listeners and the watchers increase speed and ultimately get more ROI from their ADAPT system. Now in a second, I will introduce you to the two wrestlers. Now, has anyone been to see Fighting With My Family yet? Um, it's been out, I think it's gonna be probably one of the top movies of the year, obviously nowhere near as good as probably uh, what Endgame is going to be. But what I'm interested in is, we've obviously got these two keen wrestlers who are going to show you some pretty cool hacks today. And they're basically gonna fight for whoever can get the best votes from you as the expert. So I'm gonna introduce you quickly now. So we've got Luke and we've got Alan, hi Luke. Hello everyone, I'm just looking at some familiar names on the webinar, so great to see you all online again. Uh, for those of you that haven't met me, I am um, a specialist adapt trader. Yeah. I've been at Barker Jones a good few years, I'm an ex-recruiter, I used to recruit on adapt, which is very, very helpful. Yeah. That's a little bit about me for those of you that haven't met me, and I'll let Alan introduce himself. Well, uh, hello everyone, uh, Lisa and Luke. I am uh, also, I would like to say, a specialist on uh, the ADAPT system. Um, I work for eRecruit, the company that makes the product uh, in their uh, ADAPT offices in Worthing. And I'm also an ex-recruiter. I will have to compare uh, billing notes on those, Luke, if you want. But, um, you know, I, I did a tough end. I did a tough end. I did the industrial and driving. So, you know, hardened, hardened to the, to what can they be throw at you. But yeah, looking forward to today. Let's see how we get on. I think I won the last, aren't I, from last time? Oh, Alan, how gracious of you to remember <laughs> that you won the last SmackDown. I was about to clearly bring that up as well. And my response is, if you thought you had it hard, you've not dealt with maths teachers yet. <laughs> oh, no, that is a good point. That is a good point. Now, Barclay Jones do three things for recruiters, three very, very simple things, but it's all about you and it's all about making you more effective at your desks because without that, we're kind of just surrounded by loads of tech and not enough process. What we also do in the founders of Barclay Jones, we're both IT directors in a recruitment firm. So we know what tech is needed to make a recruitment firm successful. And we've also branched out in the last 10 years into recruitment marketing because there's a lot of content out there and not enough marketing and maybe a lot of marketing and not enough candidates or too much marketing and not enough viable leads coming into the rec recruitment business. So what we do is we mentor marketeers within the recruitment space to help them generate what we call the four C's, candidates, clients, colleagues, because internal recruitment is pretty important, and cash. And we've won awards for it as well, which is clearly something that my marketeer would be disgusted with me if I didn't tell you about. So we want you to be fixated on those four C's. We want to make sure that you are very clear on how ADAPT works from a four C's perspective, because ultimately, if what you do is simply use ADAPT to administrate, simply use ADAPT to collect more data, we've kind of got enough data, I think, simply use ADAPT just to log your calls and everything, you're not gonna make any money. So we need to be fixated on those things. So that's something for you to bear in mind. Certainly my younger days, um, when I was an IT director and we had ADAPT, I've been using ADAPT since 2000, we had 150 recruiters and one of my jobs, and this is, God, 2003, was to extract the data and create what we called CPR reports or central pulse rate reports where we could look at the re recruiters and look at their time to hire, uh, look at their margins, look at their placement ratios, look at their conversion rates and all that lovely stuff. And then the recession hit and we just wanted to place. That's all we actually wanted to do. And it really feels like in recent years, we've become more uh, clever. Uh, we want to become more sophisticated. And as managers, your jobs are to make your teams successful, not just be better recruiters than them. There is a big difference. So we want to talk about some of those um, assets on the ADAPT system today. Uh, ADAPT are very kindly said to us, Lisa, you know the system, you've been training on it for 20 years. You are passionate and your team are passionate about recruiters being more effective at their desks. Take our system and put it online. And we are currently right now developing all of the resources that you lovely people are gonna need to sustainably train your business to use this system more effectively. The HIT system, by the way, will also contain stuff on inbound sales, digital marketing, LinkedIn, all the stuff that recruiters are currently distracted by and don't make enough money from, and we have the secret ingredients. 
Now, training's very important and managers, I'm putting this online on purpose. Two thirds of the people who quit their jobs last year said, you didn't train me. Not good. Other data that I read literally at 5.30 this morning, my team probably got the fright of their life and got an email from me saying, read this, there's some data in here, but 80% of your recruiters sat at the desks right now are wondering why no one's showing them how to do the job. Now, I bet you have trained them, but the problem is with inductions, they're littered with, that's where the toilets are, this is where the water cooler is, oh, that's John, and this blur of a person walks past. And somehow we expect that induction to last the duration of that person's tenure. And even as managers, we speak to managers every day who are supposedly training their staff on how to use ADAPT, but don't really know how to use it themselves. Dirty secret. So what we've actually done is some research with our existing client base and said to them, if you've got 10 staff in your business and you don't train them, what's the actual cost to your business by the end of the year? And uh, we found out, on average, it's at least £100,000 to not train 10 of your staff. And that's a conservative estimate. So that's something else to think about. And so the reason we're developing this LMS, the reason we're talking about high intensity interval training, i.e. short, sharp sessions to help you source better, uh, place quicker, reduce your cost of hire and just be happier people, is that actually your longer, more long form training courses are four to five hours, only 10% is retained anyway, which to me uh, is not a great return on investment. We're on about here making sure that whatever you do with your ADAPT system will convert candidates and clients and help your marketing department generate more warm leads for you as well. So we're here for the smackdown today with the cheese man and the tuck man. And I wanted to be great at Photoshop and superimpose the photos, but I'm far too busy with you lovely recruiters. Let's just imagine that tuck man is wearing some thigh leather PVC boots. <laughs> or maybe we don't need to imagine, maybe we need yes. to dial in life by satellite. And we've already talked oh, about oh, the previous no, webinar, imagine. so remember I'll send this to you outside of the webinar as well, probably later on this afternoon. So these gurus, these adapt gurus, as they've already introduced themselves, the two penultimate or ultimate trainers in the UK, and I would dare say worldwide, I dare say it, on ADAPT <laughs> um, are going to be demoing what they think are the best features for managers to manage their staff more effectively with ADAPT. There are four, there's probably more. We've only got time for four, but ultimately you're gonna be asked during each session whether or not you rate it. And obviously just bear in mind, Barclay Jones are running this webinar and the ADAPTER people are guests. So just bear that in mind when you're voting, please. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna generate a poll for you now. You need to grab your mice, ladies and gentlemen, and you need to tell me which of these ADAPT features you currently use. You can choose more than one. So at the moment, it looks like you're all using an analytics report. So the numbers are coming in now. We've got pipeline studios, brilliant. League tables, revenue and performance studios, all good stuff. Absolutely, I can do that. Well, it's it's around one. Uh, you can see that I've created this beautiful, eye-catching, bright studio, which um, not only looks good, but has some great information in there as well. So this is one that I've put together myself uh, via um, our dashboard creation, your creator studio there, and added in the activity versus target and revenue versus target, which is going to help me to see what my teams or my business or even individuals are doing and then the money that they're generating from that it's easy to see at a glance you can see some got some blue lines there and we've got some actual and some targets in there um, it's also easy to, to filter and see the things that you want to see so at the moment as you can see in my activity versus target i have um, the period set as this year. So this is all the activity that's happened this year. I've selected my metrics from a list based on what's important to my business to see what activity is being done. At the moment, I've got this grouped by region and I'm looking at the region here. So regions at the highest level uh, that we have per business sector. Um, and there you go, you can see there's just the one region there and I've selected my items. Now, with this, I can change, so I might say, okay, well, actually, let's group this by team, and I can have a look at the team performance, and I can select uh, which individual team uh, I want to see. Of course, I can change that down to consultant, 
and have a look at what each consultant is doing and that's gone to me as the consultant there and then I can flick through and have a look at what each person is doing so you can see from here by hovering over I've made 12 canvas calls well, maybe that's not good for the year let me uh, shorten that so you can see very easy to have a look at you know, what's going on maybe have a look over this quarter and you can see my activity uh, coming through there for that so easy to see by a region by office by team and by individual based on how much or what your responsibility for management is uh, to see now of course these items will prompt you to want to maybe have a look at more information uh, and of course that's all held in adapt this is being built from information that's actually been done in adapt so if it's not there you've also got this vision of well what's not being used and again, you will have invested uh, in your ADAPT system for this very reason, for that great overview and that great information that's given you about people using it. So you'll be able to see what's being done and also what isn't being done and therefore focusing back on perhaps a, a hit session um, of, right, nobody is logging their calls. Let's make sure people can log their calls. Uh, people aren't adding their jobs. Well, let's make sure people know how to add those jobs and they can be done in small, effective sessions. With regards to our revenue over here, of course, again, I've got it set up for all regions, all offices, all teams, all consultants this year and grouping it by region so I can see that my uh, revenue type of forecast here it's forecasting a performance of 288,000 and a little bit more um, for the business so again what I can do in here is go through and say okay well show me uh, group it by team perhaps and then I'll get to see the team's performance or forecasts on those uh, don't forget you can change the, the period there we can look at this quarter and have a look at the uh, details uh, we can even focus this right down uh, to consultant and then it'll show you uh, each consultant that is involved with the jobs and there we are we can see performance from each one and oh I'm out front on the forecast I've got to bring that in though we all know that we all know that but what I can also do um, is I can have a look at the actual so this is what is currently been brought in. Uh, this is a job type, as you can see, it says all. I can focus on perm, contract, and or temp, uh, leaving that on all so we can see individual performances. Uh, again, we can switch to looking at, this is jobs that are owned by me and the performance on those. So you can see that I've got another couple of people that I've generously shared some of my uh, fees with uh, but you can see that I am out front still looking at my actual performance on all jobs in so again you can see what's happened what's been done you can also see the productivity and the reward or revenue that's come in uh, based on that activity as well so this is going to prompt you give you an overview to prompt you to go well I want to have a look into that a little bit more your team is seems to be down on performance we're looking at good forecasting give me some details on the open jobs it's going to promote more questions going to promote discussion uh, but also give you that little bit of extra knowledge that you might have with regards to who's using and who you might need to uh, persuade or encourage to use a little bit more so there we are that is your performance studio. Brilliant, thank you very much. Excellent, thanks for that, Alan. <clears throat> so we're on with my first hack. So I have built a studio which can be great at overviewing pipelines. So when we go in on to site and train a lot of recruiters, I know from a management perspective, it's gonna be really useful just in one place to have uh, what, what does your team pipeline look like and what do the individuals within your team pipeline look like? So within Adapt, we can get that instant overview all on one screen without necessarily have to duplicate work. Of course, it's pulling the information from what's logged in Adapt, so that's the important bit. Quality in, quality out. Um, it can work from tracking leads, so from sales activity, and it can work from tracking your open pipelines. So what open jobs have we got? Where are they up to? Where, what submittals have we got? And what interviews are out there? So we've built something that can be a bit of a one-stop shop from a manager's point of view, and but with also some key key features that you might find uh, really, really useful on your day-to-day -day basis. I have created 
I'm just going to scroll up to the top so you can see my custom studios. A studio called My Teams Pipeline. You can name name it however you like, whatever it means to you. And I've gone quite creative with the colours there. I've actually done Barclay Jones branded colours. It looks eh? so much better. That's good, isn't it? It's good. It's good. Next level studio colours. Um, <laughs> so what we've got here is I've tried to um, traffic light it as well, so like a, a ragging system. So the closer we get to sending that invoice, it goes red, amber, green to a degree, even though it's pink, but I've tried my best there. So here, um, I've got my very first studio widget, which is a lead studio. So it might well be that I know certain members of my team are responsible for onboarding leads and converting them. So this can be, um, you can set this up how you like. So I've got it at team level. Again, Alan's just kind of demonstrated lots of the other filters. You might want to do it by office or region. Uh, you could then pick out individuals. But we've got accounts here where we can scroll through and see who's got how many leads on. And then if we were to assign targets, we can view their performance against target. Uh, there are various other filters, so it might be that we want to look at various statuses or grading if we're logging that. We can even look at lead conversion rates across different years. So we can start tracking the team or individual consultants. So within that team, what are the conversion rates looking like? And how are we performing year on year? So some extra filters in there that you might not have been aware of that can be really, really useful from a lead perspective. So that's early, right at the beginning of the pipeline. What leads are we actually tracking? Now, if I manage a perm team, and again, you can set this up for temp or contract jobs, it might well be that I just want to now have a look at my, uh, my active leads at the moment and do a little bit of a deeper dive. And from a management perspective, because I also recommend that consultants have their own here, of course, you can set it to team. But what you can also do here is actually use these two columns over here, or these three columns, in fact, the created date, the last contacted and days from last update. So we can look and see, well, the team are logging leads, but from creation, are, are we actually contacting? Are we making contact with the client? Um, and, and, and is there much uh, inactivity on there as well? Um, we can grade different values. So if we're assigning an estimated value of what that lead is worth to us, we can get a little bit of a mini dashboard to say, well, I've got six active leads at the moment. If we converted them all, this would be the potential value. Obviously, from that perspective, the, the widget before might give you a rough idea of what your conversion rate is so you can start forecasting where you're at from converting things into your recruitment pipeline as such so that's your active lead perm jobs uh, which again very very useful just going to minimize that one and then start working through the progress you can mix and match these um, you could maybe um, have separate these out as well but this particular one is then having a quick look at the jobs and again, I think the value column can be very, very important. So where am I at with my team? And of course, I'm hoping this is not new to you. I'm hoping this is one that a lot of people on here have used um, quite a lot. We've got the days inactive. Again, very, very powerful. Are we actually doing anything with, with, with these jobs? So rather than tracking this externally or waiting a week to have a chat in a meeting, we can open this up and say, well, actually, Let's have a little bit of a snapshot and see that we've got an interview arranged there. And on this one, we've got a couple of CV sends. So you can see the shortlist date and you can start referencing. And this will tie into one of the reports I'm gonna show you later. How quickly are we moving? Um, are the patterns when I actually filter on specific individuals within my team, which I have done here, I filtered on myself. Um, are those metrics slightly different? Are we seeing that some people are missing the fees? Some people are arranging fees up front some aren't it might just be something you want to keep an eye on in terms of whether that's best practice normal practice for you as a business and this color coded inactivity again very 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 powerful any of those reds i should be looking at that and going well we're not doing anything with it we're not shortlisting we're not cv sending we're not doing all that key activity all at a glance next up and this is probably my favorite this is i think this is an underrated widget the candidate submittal um here we go, I'm getting excited about widgets. I am excited, actually, just as a side note, big weekend in football, probably mentioned to those bars. <laughs> Keep, I want everybody praying for a Sunderland result to get Barnsley promoted this weekend. That includes Alan, even though you're from the South. So what we've got here <laughs> is, I know you don't want Barnsley to win. We get very competitive. I, 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 so no, is, no, no worry about that. I'm just, other things I'm <laughs> focusing on. 
So this is your submittals. Again, just get a bit sure you can you can click your little eye icon to get a little bit more information. But my team, where are we at in terms of CV sends, interviews, and even offers? like we can see here. So what I love, love, love about this um, widget is not only can we see the status for each individual, when was the CV sent? So we've got a rough idea when the vacancies were created beforehand, because we can see that on the previous widget, but we know that this particular role for IT trainer, we've had CV sent today, no interviews, no offers made. Here we can see a little bit of progress there within a day, excellent stuff. So we start getting into the nitty gritty. So you can start seeing at a glance, it's a little bit of a mini dashboard for each individual in your pipeline and how far along they are before you make a placement. Now you don't necessarily have to include these. I've stuck them in as a little bit of a bonus because this is more about pipeline, but every now and again, you've worked hard on your pipeline. You want to have a quick review. So you've got your firm placement dashboard and I've just applied using my metrics, a couple of columns, for uh, salary, fee percentage, and fee. So I've got all my metrics here. If you have this switched on, which I know a lot of you will have, I can then even print or export and feed that into say, I don't know, a one-to-one -one review or an appraisal. And then very, very finally, um, as a manager who ran a lot of temp recruit, I, I, and I appreciate I've used a perm example here, but the same principles can apply to temp recruitment. The starters studio can be the final bit. Okay, we've placed them. Are we, going to, are we going to follow that through, provide a bit of aftercare? And here we can see within the next seven days across all my team or individual, if you've got lots on there and you want to break it down, we can see that Tara Carter um, started three days ago uh, as a BD manager, but she hasn't been checked in. Um, here, a recruiter could run the check-in action. We can actually see that um, the manager role here at Trilateral IT was checked in today. So you can keep an idea in terms of aftercare, who you've got coming up, who you need to be aware of. It's fantastic when one of those members of staff calls in sick last minute and you want to just check who they've got starting. And that is my performance studio. Now, I'm getting a bit nervous because we're going to put Alan back on. <laughs> you know? He's not to be trusted, that <laughs> yeah, one's okay. So, so you ready, Alan? I might just put you on mute. <laughs> Five minutes and just let you think you're talking and everyone's going to be disguised doing us anything right I, I don't know what I've, I, I don't know what I've done to upset you I, I'm very happy for Barnsley uh, you know that's all good and <laughs> and 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 dogs are great and and and, and oh. the, the north is is a wonderful place um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know yeah, oh I love a bit of thrones the north yeah. remembers doesn't it <laughs> although ironically not one whip it in the game of thrones can I just make a comment about that no, I don't know if they were in, I don't know if they were invented then. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Right, everybody, over to, over, over to the tuck man. <laughs> many thanks, many thanks. I, I feel, you know, slightly, um, you know, behind at this moment with with, with with your your comments. But I shall carry on. Uh, you know that I love this system. You know that I'm passionate about it, and I hope that um, you know the things that I can uh, show you um, will be incorporated into your day as managers and directors. So, uh, for me, the next thing we've looked at studios, which is obviously our live reports, and Luke has shown you a fantastic studio uh, as well. They're certainly worth uh, setting up and using. But another area of the business of uh, the system that we have is our reporting. Uh, so I want to show you uh, a couple of things that the system can do as standard. So I'll report uh, menu over here and into reports. Now the one that I want to show you is looking at, uh, again, after all the activity that's happened and the indication of revenues and forecasting what you've done, what, which of your clients is, uh, you know, engaging with you the most? Uh, how many placements are you making? What revenue and margins and profits are you uh, generating from those particular clients? And one report that I think will give you that uh, uh, insight uh, is going to be our client league table. Simply click on there to select it and then build your report how you need to. Uh, the dates that you may have used last time will be in there, but thinking about how you want to cover these, well, how far back do I want to go? Well, we want to see, well, how are we doing so far this year? You know, maybe coming up to halfway, uh, we can go in and we can look at then uh, putting in, I might go all the way back to uh, January, early in January, 
uh, and then looking at up to the end of this week. Now I might want to include placements that have already been made where people haven't started yet. So I can extend this date past uh, the day that we have. Perhaps I do want to look at well, what are we going to be bringing in um, up until the halfway point of the year, uh, looking at the end of June. Uh, you'll notice here, as with many things through ADAPT, I've got the option to specify a region office team or consultant. So this is great for team reviews, great for individual reviews. Um, if you work multi-industry sector, you can add in a certain industry sector in there as well. Bear in mind that will have had to have been added uh, into the client records for it to produce accurate results. Quality in, quality out, as my colleague from the north has already said. Then I've got looking at job type. Uh, again, if you do all of these three sectors or, or recruitment types, you can look at all of them or you can specify a certain one. I wanna look at my contract businesses or my permanent business. I'm gonna leave that as all for now. Client level, always make sure that's set at site level. Uh, you've then got your results type where we wanna look at clients. You could break it down by contact. Uh, as well um, if you're dealing with particularly large organizations and their uh, mul multiple requirements across there uh, and then I've got number of results well you can see top 10 or even top 100 depending on the number of clients uh, that you're working with I'm going to leave mine as top 10 those special top 10 uh, then I'm going to group it by job type I do have industry as the option there but I'm going to say well let me look at this via what perm business I'm doing let me look at this by what contract business and so on and then I've got my report format to come out, uh, PDF, Word or Excel. So if you do want to look at the information that's in there, but maybe do a little bit of formulation yourself, it might be worthwhile producing this in Excel. I'm going to stick with PDF, one of my favourites, uh, and then I'm going to hit confirm. So this is going to go right through our system and it's going to produce us results based on what we've asked it to. So here we go. Here's my top 10 uh, that have given me gross margin, so profit on the permanent side. And the old mouse technology is there. They're well ahead, well ahead. Uh, I've got quick shakes, all the rest of them there you can see. So this is looks like it's going to be fees that we've charged those particular companies. Must have done a good deal on that trilateral one. Look at that. Whew. Uh, then we're looking at job type uh, placements. So I can see that on the permanent side, I've made two placements in quick shakes and the others all coming in at one placement. And then, and what I really like about this is our studio gave us indication. Our report gives us a little overview, but it also gives us detail, the client name, the industry type, total jobs, total placements, and even our average and total gross margins. Moving into temp, as you can see here, there's my gross margin. Now, this is working on actual. So these are from timesheet information that's been entered and it's been calculated from there. So you can see margins that have been made uh, through those. A little bit worrying at this Holland one here, that looks to be a minus. Again, I may have done them a deal. I may have given them some free of charge services, but that's going to show on the report and raise questions or things that you want to bring up. You can see that CRX, I've got by far the most temps placed in there. And looking at the detail on those temp ones as well through there. And then finally moving through to our contract. So we can see our margins, profits there as well. And again, a very worrying one here looking at the clear group. Uh, I'd be asking questions about what's happened there and following that up uh, with the particular consultant that might be dealing with that company. I've then got placements, so I can see that CRX again, a lot of temp, a lot of contract business in there, looks good, and the detail from those as well. So this report really is looking at, well, where am I bringing money in from? Where's my money being made? Who am I placing the most people with? Obviously, successes uh, that I'm looking at with regards to development of business, but also the opportunity for growth. So we might be looking at, well, OK, I've made one placement at Mouse Technologies and made a really good fee off of that. There could be some more opportunities to make some more money through that one. Uh, whereas with Trilateral, maybe I need to work on uh, my margins or percentages that I'm making through there. So as well as showing what's good, we're also showing opportunities for growth as well. And also 
if people are spending more money with you, they may deserve better gifts at certain times of the year. Who knows? But you've got the info, you've got the know-how, you can take it forward from there. And that is my client league table report. Excellent, so really good one. Um, big fan of the client league table. And um, we're going to wrap up with uh, one of my favourites. It's it's sometimes a report that not a lot of people use. I think when we uh, polled earlier, I think a few people said they'd used this before. So I just want to show you a few few of my favourite features from an analytics perspective, where you can analyse daily productivity. I really like that one. Um, also assessing uh, some key conversion rates all in one report and then um, a t t time to hire which can be really interesting and if, if it's not something that you've looked at before it can really kind of shine some light on how quickly you're moving in some of those um, key areas so we'll pop into adapt and I will head over to reports and reports and right down in the bottom section performance third one down we have an analytics report now First thing to point out is um, this can be can generate quite a lot of info. So I would do this in maybe smaller batches. I just actually remembered one that I ran last time. Yeah. So you do get a little bit of a message at the top just to say if you're doing large teams or large regions with lots of analytic types over lots of long periods, then it'll just take a little bit longer to run. Uh, the one that I've done here is for the uh, month of April. So I've gone from the, the, the 1st of April here and I've gone over to the 28th. So I'll just uh, confirm that on here. So in terms of my analytics here, um, you could, as Alan's uh, covered before, I don't want to go over stuff that he's already covered, but look at team level or consultant level. I'm gonna go with team and I've specifically chosen um, permanent. So again, you could do contract or you could do temp. Now if I'm looking at perm recruitment on here, what I would then need to do is select my analytics type so I've pre-selected three here that I'm going to demonstrate there are others on there so if these are really important to you you want to track lost business you want to track some um, specific client activity ratios etc etc feel free to just pop in there have a nosy what you've got available to you and then as always you can group this so you might want to group by consultant Probably not, doesn't make sense for me to do job type because I've filtered on permanent anyway. And then I can do it by region team, depending on what filters I've got. So I'll just do it by consultant in this instance and I'll click confirm. And here we have a few different mini reports to show you. So I'm going to pop through to, to the key ones over here. So I'm just going to scroll down and firstly show you the vacancies to creative placements. So Alan is on a roll in the training room. He has logged five vacancies and created five placements so i'd be saying absolutely fantastic nothing to worry about there and then we can now see that we've got journey and loot oh god three vacancies too many webinars that is i need to need to get back to recruiting uh with zero placements and you can see that other people here are one and one so he start, starts kicking ratios out in terms of when you start seeing people putting lots of vacancies on without many uh, creative placements. It's just the at a glance. You've probably got an idea anyway, because of course you're managing them on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can get that data for previous periods. You can even compare year on year where you are as a team. Um, another great ratio that you can look at is how many interviews you arrange compared to how many placements you create as a user. So again, we can see that um, you've got the interviews on, in this column, created placements just to the side, and then it sends you out a ratio. So I like the ability just to have a look at the whole team in one go in this particular example. So there, um, I guess your job ratios, uh, a couple of the key ones. There are other things about offers, but I'm just demonstrating a couple of the, the important ones from my perspective. Love time to place. I absolutely love this one. This is telling me that the average days to fill a vacancy is here 30 for Alan, 20 for training user two, and how many placements that resulted in. So again, it starts kicking ratios out. The higher that is, the longer the average days to fill is. And again, you can get some averages up at the top. So that's the average days to fill. There's also a great one um, for average interviews arranged um, for jobs to create a placement. So you can start getting statistics and maybe dig deeper into the interview process. Well, you're getting the interviews, but you're not quite getting them over the line. Is it anything to do with interview prep? Is it anything to do with uh, the offer negotiation, 
Um, has that been negotiated? Are you doing enough early on in, in terms of the pre-screening calls uh, with the client briefs, et cetera, et cetera, which is meaning these things are dropping out last minute. So I really like that. And then again, if I only selected one analytic, I'd get a much smaller report, but because I've stuck three in here, I want to show you average CV sends per day. So you can see I've got number of CV sent over number of days and it kicks out your average based on that, that period because obviously I've selected the same period for everyone there. And again, it gives you some stats. So you can start to spot patterns and think, well, if these two consultants are working the same patch, the same rig, whatever you guys call it, why are the numbers so different? Um, and you can maybe spot patterns and the exact same daily count and average for interviews. So how many interviews are being arranged per day? And again, if everyone's got a rough target, which I'm sure a lot of you have, you can then start comparing that within this report. So they're the couple that I want to show you. Analytics uh, has a wealth of information in there. You've got access to all this data, provided it's all been tracked and people are engaging with the system. It makes your life as a manager nice and easy because you've got access at manager level, at director level, you can share that across the business and it can be really powerful to manage your, uh, manage your consultants by data really, because it paints a very clear picture. And that is the analytics report. Because let's face it, people, if it's not on the system, it doesn't exist. We've been saying this for many years, but it's only recently that as managers, we've really started to get grips with the data on the system and not just the data on our spreadsheets, the data on our whiteboards, the data that's coming out of our mouths when we're running meetings. And we know lots of recruiters out there are plugging in systems like Cube19 and Dynistics, et cetera, to help extract the data, but actually there's a wealth of information already in your ADAPT system. No matter what ADAPT system you have access to, that's really gonna help you become more effective managers. Because managing by fact and not feelings often tends to be a more effective way. Right. So there can obviously only be one in a smackdown, you know, everyone's left dead and there's somebody on stage with a very shiny belt or rather everybody's gone off to have a gin and tonic if it was me personally, you know, that's what I would be doing. Obviously, Alan's going to be on the side of the, uh, you know, hanging over the ropes uh, with his uh, sweaty, uh, thigh length red PVC boots on. Um, yeah? No? <laughs> Let's find out, everybody. Probably, probably, yes. Right, lovely. Um, so everybody, grab your mouse. This is the most important mouse click you're going to generate today. Um, and it's obviously going to mean a lot to me. Wonderful hacks today. Wonderful, uh, you know, much respect to my colleague, uh, Luke. Uh, great choices, sir. Great choices. Yeah, but Alan, what if I close the poll without telling you what the answer is? <laughs> No, I, I'm not bothered, but they're all very good hacks today. Yeah. I mean, we both passionate about the system. We both <laughs> definitely, if you're going to use these. No one said there can only be one winner. <laughs> she <laughs> might have been wrong. I might have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you right, know. And I'm sharing the results. Oh, my word. Look at that. Is that what you say to everybody on a Friday <laughs> afternoon? <laughs> I've been I've been uh, I've been quite low for the last quarter because Alan beat me and I was really hoping I could get cheered up this weekend and yeah. now we've tied. I don't no, you're that's tied. Nice. That means we need to do a third smackdown and completely <laughs> nail you to the floor, Alan. <laughs> yeah, no, this is good. Listen to this webinar. We do love you. We just got a really good relationship with yeah. Alan and we like to bully him. We don't want any bias from all. You made your vote. However, I've not voted yet. Maybe I can swing it. Right, everybody. Well, well, maybe. You've all been fabulous. Let's just finish up, everyone, because that's what we need to do. You need to go back and start doing some stuff. You know, the ROI, the, the high intensity interval training we've been doing for the last 45 minutes, don't forget, the LMS, recruitment hit, as we are calling it, is coming. I know you're all going to be, you know, welcoming it with open arms. Some of you even want to pilot it for free. Don't forget, two thirds of your staff are likely to quit this year if you don't train them and manage them. So you have a responsibility here to be effective as managers. And don't forget the hit thing we've been talking about, whether or not it's us or you use someone else, make that training high intensity. Nobody wants to, will to lose the will to live by sitting at a system not really knowing what they're doing with it. And obviously as well, we've got a number of hacks on our website. If you need anything in the meantime, my email address is lisa at barclayjones.com. You've obviously asked questions throughout this webinar that will come back to you separately, but we really are flattered by the time you've taken today to come and see us. And we'll send you this link very soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.